That's in a whirlwind there. And after the old men and old women were gathered in the street, some say that they had their walking sticks and different versions of the Bible because they was of a particular age. And then after the old men and the old women dwelled in the street, it say that the street was full of boys and was full of girls and they were playing in the streets. And we know when we're seeing kids outside, kids have the most free, free spirits there is. They're not worried about too many things. So we can see that the God has already established the pulpit. We can see that the word of God is going forth because when the word of God comes forth, the land once was desolate. Now he are bringing everything back together in full circle. And it say, if it be marvelous in the eyes of these people in these days, so shall it be marvelous in my eyes, says the Lord of hosts. Well, let us read verse number six from the New, from the New International Version. It said, that, why, that is what the Lord Almighty say. It, it seemed marvelous to the remnant of these people at this time, but will it seem marvelous to me, declares the Lord. See, the Lord is bringing the people back together and when they were scattered out into a place of unknown and uncharted territory, it would cause you to cry out to the Lord. So right now, God knows that they will be pleased because he is doing a restoration for them in the land of Jerusalem. But wonder would he be pleased with the work that he's doing for them? At verse number seven, it says, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I will save my people from the countries from the east and from the west. And God's going to save them from Babylon once again. So what he did when he went out and proclaimed the word again, you see, when the word go forth, he's going to call us out of our sins and back into his presence where God desired for us to be in the first place. Because we understand that it's, no, it's not God's will that no man should perish. It's said that we should all be called into repentance that we might have everlasting life. And he said he will bring them back to live in Jerusalem and they will be my people and I will be faithful and righteous to them as their God. And you see like when we get so far out of grace, God will have a way of getting our attention and God will have a way of, of shaking us up to cause us to focus back on him. And God should be the center of our joy at all times. And here we see where God did get angry. So don't let no one tell you that God will not chastise you. We got some people say he won't, but God do chastise the people that he loved. And we look here, he said when he bring them back together, he going to bring them back that they're going to live in Jerusalem. So just imagine that God was so upset with them. And then he had scattered them and they put them in a place of unknown, a place of uncertainty, a place that they wasn't even familiar with. And you was used to living over in the promised land. And the promised land was a good place, a holy place. And now you have lost the benefits of God. But now God is calling you back into his presence, into his safety, into his arms, into his holy hand where he desired for us to be at all of the time and he said that they will be fruitful and righteous to them as their God that God is going to be fruitful and that he's going to be righteous to them as their God we see that God got angry but we see God have a forgiving heart and God have a forgiving spirit because once he restored things he throws them into a sea of forgiveness and right now he's going to bring you back and he said he's going to be faithful and gonna be righteous. Now we see how faithful God is and how righteous he is to us. But the thing is, are we faithful to God and righteous to God as we should be to him as he is to earth? And we can see clearly that no, as people, we just find it hard to walk according to the will of God. Because if it was in our heart, then God would have not sent the whirlwind into the Holy Land and scattered them in the first place. And you and I know how we are. Sometimes we like to play, let's make a deal. We like to shack up with God. When he put us in unplaces of unknowns and uncertainties, then he have our center, uh, our attention, and we would be the center of our focus. But as soon as God bring us out of this storm, we get comfortable in our sins again, and we will go pick up a different sin that will cause God to come back and show us how much he really truly loved us. So we can see that there is a lot that we can glean from this lesson. And we go and we look at verse number 11, King James Version, verse number 11 through number 13. It's a, but I will not be unto the residue of the people as in the former days, saith the Lord of hosts. For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due, 
and I will cause the remnant of these people to possess all these things. And it shall come to pass that as you were cursed among the heathen, O house of Judea and O house of Israel, so will I save you, and you shall be a blessing. Fear not, let your hands be strong. So after God have called the people back to Jerusalem, and after he said that he was going to be faithful to them, and he was going to be righteous to them, it say, but we realized that the land was desolate. So he called them back to Jerusalem. Now God is preparing a way to make sure that they're going to be able to have food for nourishment. Verse number 11 says, but what now I will not be unto the residue of these people in the former days, said the Lord of hosts. NIV read, but I will not deal with the remnant of these people as I did in the past, declared the Lord of hosts. Well, you know, in the past, what has happened was he got upset with them and he caused the land to be desolate. But right now, God is in a different space in where he feel and, and, and what he desired to have for his people. So they don't have to worry about what has happened in the past. What he is telling them that they've got to keep their word, keep his words in their hearts and try not to sin against them. And if you would obey God, we realize obedience is better than the sacrifice. That look at the favor that God have over our lives once we walk according to what the word says. If for, for the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, the ground shall give her increase. When God be for you, who could be against you? Clearly we see that when you plant a seed, a seed is going to have to go through a, a, a different face and a different level. So at this time, he's going to plant a seed into a ground and the seed is going to be prosperous. How do you know that the seed is going to be prosperous? Because the seed is going to start to multiply and the vine is going to give fruit and the ground shall give her increase and the heaven shall give a new dew. That means that God is going to restore us. God is going to heal the land as he had done previously before. And I will cause the remnant of these people to possess all of these things. God freely gives to those that really love him. Verse number 13. It says, and it shall come to pass that as you are cursed among the heathen, O house of Judea and the house of Israel, so will I save you. And you shall be a blessing. Fear not. Let your hands be strong. NIV version read, just as you, Judea and Israel, have been cursed among the nations, so will I save you. And you will be a blessing. Do not be afraid. Let your hands be strong. God knows that the people had gone through some things without really being in his protection. And they probably lost a sense of security. But he's letting them know that if I say something, you can count on it. Because the Bible clearly says, before the word returned back unto me void, both heaven and earth will pass away. Yes, I know what you've been through because I am your God. But you understand you guys were disobedient to my will and I put you in that storm. But now that I put you through that storm, if I led you to the storm, I'm able to bring you out of that storm. So at that particular time, we see where God has blessed them. He had put seeds back in the ground that they would have fruits that they can feed off of and that they could enjoy the land that he had once um, had them to do from the first. And verse number 14 through verse number 17, it says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, as though I thought to punish you when your father provoked me to wrath, said the Lord of hosts, and I repented not. So again, I have thought in these days to do well with Jerusalem and to the house of Judea. Fear ye not. These are the things that you shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute judgment of truth and peace in your gates. And let none of you imagine evil in your heart against his neighbor. And love no false oaths. For all these things are the things that I hate, saying the Lord of hosts. Where God is trying to tell us to be more Christ-like. How to be like him. We love God by simply how we love one another. How is it that you're going to say that you love God, but you hate your brother that you see daily? The lie and the truth is not in you. So right now God is telling them what to do and how he wants it done. 
verse 14 NIV. This is what the Lord Almighty said. Just as I had determined to bring disaster on you and show you no pity and show no pity when your ancestors angered me, says the Lord Almighty. So now I have determined to do good again to Jerusalem and Judea. Do not be afraid. I know that I have turned my back on you as God, as your people did not take heed to my word as your ancestor, and it angered me. But now this is a new day. Do as I tell you to do, and I determine you that I'm going to do good to you, Jerusalem and Judea. Don't be afraid. These are the things that you are to do. Speak the truth to each other. Render truth and sound judgment in your courts. God is telling us how we got to dwell with one another that will also be pleasing to him. It says speak the truth to one another. That means that we got to be able to carry the word of God. And we got to be able to speak the word of God to people. And it say, and render the truth. Once you know better, you should do better. And sound judgment in your courts. Don't be led of an emotion. Be led of the spirit. Let the word of God be a lamp to your feet. Let the word of God be a light on your pathway. And he's telling us this, that we got to love each one another. Verse number 17, do not plot evil against each other and do not love to swear falsely. I hate all this, declares the Lord. So again, God is telling us, don't do evil towards one another. Because if you walk doing evil towards one another, that's walking in darkness. And that's walking in the will of Satan. And God is love. God is light. It's saying do not love to swear falsely. We got to be careful at how we play that we're so holy. Understanding that our actions speak louder than words. You can tell the tree by the fruit that it bears. And if you are anchored in the word of God, and if God is the center of your joy, then you will be bearing the fruit of God, the characteristics of God. You would display love. You would display gentleness. You would display meekness. You would display joy. You would have peace. You would have long suffering. These are the characteristics of Jesus Christ. So we learn from today's lesson, when we make God our center focus and let God be the head of our lives, let God be the author and the finisher of our faith. We see that a new day is coming. So we realize that we're living in a pandemic in today's time. And this pandemic is very unknown to us. It's very uncertain. It's a place that we have not been in as a nation. And we realize that a new day is coming based off what the Spirit of God has revealed to Zechariah today and what Zechariah has shared with us according to what God has allowed him to see, that God will get angry with us because of our disobedience, because of our sins, and because of our selfish nature. But if we would just receive the Word of God and we will let the Word of God be our God, that God can restore what was taken away from us. It is a new day, and a new day is coming only when we walk by faith and we do not walk by sight. Uh, we thank y'all for um, joining us this morning in our Pine Hill Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I hope that the Word of God um, can help you and edify you in these days and times that we're living in, realizing that a new day is coming. And the new day is going to come when you have your mind made up and your heart fixed. For God, you're going to live. And for God, you're going to lay down and you're going to die. And the only thing we got to do is be obedient. Obedient is better than the sacrifice. Why would we want to make God upset? Why would we want to make God angry when we have to realize that we need God more than what God needs us. So again, please ma'am, please sir, please adhere to the word of God and please hide them in your hearts. Try not to sin against them. 
Let us love each one another as he have taught us to do in this lesson. Let us speak the things that is true. And the word of God is true. And the word of God is for the people of God. Let us be in right relationship with God. Understand that God has something that he wants to reveal to you as well as he revealed it to Zechariah. But you got to be in right relationships with God. It will be done in spirit and in truth. So if we look at this lesson today that Zechariah is teaching us from his experience with God and that God will talk to you. God will show you things and God will restore the things that is broken in our lives. But we have to be in the right standing in order for God to move in a way that he desires to move in a way that he chooses to bless us. We thank you for tuning in this morning with our virtual Sunday school, May 10th, 2020, here at Pine Hill Missionary Baptist Church. And to all the mothers out there, we would like to salute you and wish you all a happy Mother's Day. And we're going to get through this. A new day is coming.